Yeah. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. I'll walk the streets of gold, for he has saved my soul. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. When Jesus went to the cross, he rescued me from sin and law. He broke the devil's hold, he brought sunshine to my soul. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. I'll walk the streets of gold, for he has saved my soul. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. Well, good evening, friends. Welcome to Crossfell Church. We're glad you're here with us. We hope and pray that the Lord will bless you tonight to this music that we sing, to the message that we bring. We pray that you'll be blessed. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. God gave us his very best. In Jesus we are truly blessed. There is no other way for us to be saved. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. In Jesus I'm heaven bound. I walk the streets of gold, for he has saved my soul. In Jesus, I'm heaven bound. Amen. Woo. Good job, Jacob. Good job. Hey, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can come together and worship you. And I pray for those who are tuning in, those who are watching, that their hearts will be knit to you in the Spirit. And Lord, we pray that you would just pour out a blessing on us the filling of the Spirit, the inspiration of the Spirit as we sing, as we bring the message. Lord, I just pray that you would reach those who need to hear and reach us too. Lord, we're here because we love you. We're here to serve you. These things I pray in the powerful name of Jesus, Yeshua, our salvation. Amen. Well, folks, welcome to Cross Trail Church. This recording is going up on Facebook. And if you're tuning in, we're glad to have you. Uh, just a few minutes, I want to share a few words to you with you about Cross Trail Church, what this is. Uh, this is a church that we're now forming here in Oklahoma City. We call ourselves a Western Community Church, and what that means is, listen, we're country folks in Oklahoma, and we celebrate our culture and our heritage. We love the Lord Jesus, and we love our culture, and so we worship Him, you know, in, the, in a Western way, in a country and Western type of way. And that's what you're experiencing and what you're seeing here this evening. And we're just getting started. And things are going, you know how it is when things first begin, it's a little slow going, but we've got a few things going on that we want to share with you. First of all, I want to tell you about a couple of books that we have uh, uh, for sale, and the proceeds all go to support the work of Cross Trail Church. We have, we have two manuscripts that are for sale. Um, we have The Presence of God, and this book is about how you can realize more of the presence of God in your life. God is active in our life, we just don't realize it. And this book will help you uh, to uh, tune in to what God's doing in your life. And this book will be a blessing to you. Now this book by itself is $16. A uh, suggested donation of $16 because we're non-profit. Uh, we survive on the donations of our, uh, our, our congregants and people who follow us, of course. So for a suggested donation of $16, you can get the presence of God. Or you can get Designed to Succeed. Uh, this book was written... Uh, to show you how that God never intended anyone to be a failure in life. He intended all of us to live victoriously. And so uh, you can get the presence of God for a suggested donation of $16 or designed to succeed for a suggested donation of uh, $16. Just write down on a piece of paper, please send me whichever title you would like and send that to 3225 Southwest 82nd Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma 73159. That address, again, is 3225 Southwest 82nd Street, uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73159. Make all checks and money orders payable to Cross Trail Church. And uh, now, if you like both of them, you can have both of them for the price of $30. That knocks $2 off. And uh, a suggested donation of $30, again, sent to 3225 Southwest 82nd Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73159. And you can find that address uh, on our website. We do have a uh, website that is crossfrailchurch.com. Uh, 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 
and you'll find it on and we have a email account where you can email us your thoughts and uh, your prayer request all of that is on um, crosstrailchurch.com and you'll find all that there uh, so that being said I also want to tell you that we also we also have our our monthly newsletter it is up and uh, running and for those of you uh, uh, who would like to uh, make a donation you'll be automatically subscribed to our monthly newsletter but if you just you know uh, we covet your uh, prayers too and so if you're just not able to make a donation but you'd like to get the Cowboy Chronicle then just uh, write to us at 3225 Southwest 82nd Street Oklahoma City Oklahoma 73159 or send us an email to uh, crosstrailchurch at gmail.com and uh, we'll put you on the mailing list and you'll receive this uh, wonderful newsletter. Now everybody who orders a book or anybody who sends a donation will automatically uh, be uh, signed up to receive the newsletter. And it's got, it's got a, a articles that I write. It's also got you know uh, little articles about this month, what happened in the Old West, and notable quotes, upcoming events. You'll want to have this, folks. This will keep you informed of what's happening at Crossroad Church. So uh, just uh, send us that email or write to us and uh, you'll get on our mailing list. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it. Did I have anything else, Jacob? No. no. All right. So with that being said, let's just continue with our worship this evening. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Problems. Typical problems. Oh, I see what we did here. Yep. No problem. All right. Oh, once like a bird in prison I dwelt, no freedom from my sorrow I felt. But Jesus came and listened to me, and glory to God, He set me free. He set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me, I'm glory bound by Jesus. He sets me free. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. Glory to God, well I'm homeward bound. Cause He set me free, yes He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, He set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound. Well, not of the world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying to, and glory to God, I'm going through. Cause He set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, oh, He set me free. Amen. Uh -huh. All right. Well, some glad when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I fly away and I fly away, oh glory! I fly away when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. Bars that flow, I'll fly away, and I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just 
a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away and I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, bye and bye. Away. Good job, Jacob. Good job. Amen. Thank you very much. Would you be free? Oh, wait a minute. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. And would you a victory? Wait a minute, would you or evil a victory win? Oh, there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. Would you be free from your passion and pride? Well, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's time. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. And would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. And would you live daily His praises to sing? Oh, there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land.
trust and obey For there's no other way To be happy in Jesus But to trust and obey Then in fellowship sweet We will sit at His feet Or we'll walk by His side in the way says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. for our final song. This is a special for you. <clears throat> it's one you've never heard before because it's one I wrote. It's called It Happened at the Cross. And uh, we've been working on this for a little bit and we hope you enjoy it. We know you'll enjoy it. Go ahead, Jacob. Fire us off. That faithful day when I did see the glory of God illumined me. My Savior's love made my heart brand new. And now by faith I'm going. And it happened at the cross where I first saw the light. It happened at the cross where I received new sight. It happened at the cross my burden rolled away. It happened at the cross I was now above the starry sky, my eternal home with the Lord now lies, a debt of love I can't repay, to live by faith, it's the only way, and it happened at the cross where I first saw the light, it happened at the cross when I received your sight, it happened at the cross my burden rolled away. It happened at the cross I was And now in love, we've story to tell That leads away from sin and hell Our Savior died that we might live my life, my all, my all to give. And it happened at the cross where I first saw the light. It happened at the cross when I received your sight. It happened at the cross, my burdens rolled away. It happened at the cross, I was saved. It happened at the cross, I was saved. Turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 27 through 30. Now, what I like to do is I like to ask everyone to stand in honor of God's Word, and that also lets me know that you're awake, and it also lets me know that we're on the same page. Matthew, chapter 11, beginning in verse 27, we'll read to verse 30. Matthew 11, 27 through 30. <clears throat> and it says, this is the Lord Jesus speaking, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whosoever the Son shall reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We pray for your blessing, the anointing of the Spirit. We pray that those who need to hear this will hear. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> welcome. Welcome to Cross Trail Church. This is our inaugural worship service. 
we wanted to do this online. We wanted to put it out there. And uh, we will someday have a brick and mortar church. Uh, right now, we are meeting at Faith Hope Life, which is on uh, Portland Avenue in Oklahoma City. They graciously allowed us to use their facility to record our services so that those of you, the reason we wanted to put this online, those of you have to work, because I have to work on Sundays. And, and not everybody has a chance to go and worship on Sunday. And so, but if you can access this through the Cross Trail Cowboy Ministries Facebook page, and uh, we'll probably get a YouTube channel up and going as well. If you can access these through the internet, you can uh, tune in to worship and worship at any time. And we hope that someday as we get a brick and mortar church going, that we will have worship services available for people to attend at all times during the week because not everybody can make it to church on Sunday morning. And uh, there's a lot that we've got planned and a lot that we hope to do. And I'd like to kind of introduce you to what we're uh, striving for at Crossrail Church. Because, now listen, being a part of a New Testament church can be wearisome at times. It can wear you down. We're told in Romans chapter 15, verse 1, that we ought to bear with the infirmities of the weak. We ought to bear with the weaknesses of the weak. Which means that we've got to put up with a lot of nonsense that in no way really edifies the believer or the church. And it, it, and it can get to you. Let's face it, there are a lot of people in churches today, and they're more interested in propagating their own opinions on others than they are actually learning from the Word of God or sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to Him. There are many men and women, and they claim that they belong to Christ, but they don't understand the nature of the grace of God. They don't understand the nature of the love of God or even the forgiveness of God. And they don't understand the dignity that's found in mankind who is created in the image of God. And that's just a long-winded way of saying this. Though people belong to the church, there's many that are far from belonging to God. And I'm not, I'm hope, hopefully I'm not sounding bitter. Hopefully I'm not coming across as someone who is, who is hurt or has a, a vendetta or an axe to grind. Because that's not the truth. That's not what's happening here. But I want to tell you, I have been in the pastorate since 1999. I have pastored various churches in these last 20 years. Uh, all but one have been a traditional Southern Baptist church. And in every single church, every single church I pastored, even, uh, even Way of the Cross Cowboy Church, which I uh, started, I, I found a lot of people had the same attitude. I found a lot of the same situations. I found a lot of people who were busybodies and gossips and, and a lot of people who just practiced outright slander. And I found there were people in the church and, and they wanted to believe or they wanted to rule, have rule over everyone and they wanted to act as if their word was law and they ought to be able to tell everybody what they ought to do. And there's always people in the church who have a sort of subversive nature and what they want to do is they want to come in and usurp God's delegated authority in the church they want to be able to uh, guide the church into what they think the church ought to be doing, disregarding uh, the leadership that God has put into place. And I found Sunday school teachers who don't bother to study so that uh, uh, they show themselves approved. And so you go to Sunday school classes and you have Sunday school teachers and they speak about, they spout out a bunch of stuff and they, they, uh, they speak about things that they know nothing of. And... Uh, they offer their opinions in the place of the Word of God. I've, inter I've encountered custodians who like to snoop through all the offices and like to listen in on conversations, right? Uh, there are men and women, they want to challenge every word the preacher preaches. They want to challenge every word that's taught in the church. And I've encountered this situation in every church that I've ever pastored. And now this is not to say that there are not genuine believers in traditional Southern Baptist churches or traditional churches or long-established churches. There are. But what I'm saying is this. I don't want to be a part of that travesty any longer. I don't want to be a part of any of that any longer. I, I am desiring something that, is, something that is more genuine. Something that to me is more than a Sunday morning a social club with religious trappings. Something more than, uh, you know, a community center with a cross hanging over it. 
I, I'm searching for something that is more genuine, and I'm searching to worship God with people who honestly love the Lord Jesus and are genuine in their faith in Jesus. And that brings us to where we are today. And what the people who are with me here this evening desire to do. We're here. Me and the people that are here with me in this building this evening. We're here because we want to have a church that is founded upon this single precedent that Jesus is Lord. And we desire to worship the Lord Jesus in spirit and in truth. And we just want to get away. We want to leave behind all that baggage that comes with churchy end. The Lord Jesus said this, Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. He said, all things are delivered unto me of my Father. The Lord Jesus says this in Matthew 16, 18. I will build my church. Most of the problems that we face in any church can be dismissed by realizing this one thing, that Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. That Jesus is our Savior and that He is also His Lord. And He is the head of the church. Many churches suffer with strife and, and, and it's for this one reason. There are men and women, they just want to be in charge. They just want to have it their way. There are people in most churches and they believe that they could do a better job of building the church than the Lord Jesus who said, I will build my church, can. And so many times what I found is people in the church plainly ignore the Word of God and simply pursue their own agenda. They sacrifice their own opinion for the Word of God and call it the Word of God. And listen, when this happens, you're not worshiping God. You're not worshiping the Lord Jesus. If you sacrifice, your, if you substitute your opinion for the Word of God, if you think that what you think and what you feel is what God thinks and what God feels, what you've done is created a God in your own image, you are not worshiping in spirit and in truth. There's people in the church who ignore the Word of God to pursue their own agenda. And they do things in the strength of the flesh, not in the strength of the spirit. And anything you do in the flesh, that's carnality and it's worldly. And it has no place in the church of Jesus Christ. Because this church is holy ground. The church is holy ground. It's God's ground. It's Jesus' domain. This being the case, at Cross Trail Church, our philosophy of ministry, it's simple, it's straightforward. God's word, this right here, the Bible... God's Word is the final word on everything that we do. God's Word hold, holds precedent over every area of our lives, most especially here in His church. Jesus is the head of the church. And so the pastors and teachers in this congregation, we are committed to teaching nothing but the Bible. We're committed to teaching the Bible so that the congregation... All those who choose to listen to what we preach and to what we teach, they can respond to the Word of God. They can respond to Jesus Christ by faith. So I'm not here to flatter you. I'm not here to butter you up with kind words. I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. My call has been made expressly clear to me by the Holy Spirit. My calling is to be a missionary to... Middle America. And I'm called to preach the word. All of it. All of it. My calling is to preach those things that we like to hear. But most especially those things that we don't really want to hear. But these things we need to hear. And the point is this. It, the point of this is so that the individual. That's you. That's me. That's us. The point is so that the individual may respond to Christ Jesus. Move by his or her own free will, in obedience that's fueled by faith and love. That's the entire point of preaching the gospel. So that you, in your own free will, can freely choose to follow Christ in love. Listen to what the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 14, 4. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Yea, he, sh yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. You know what that means? 
That means that each and every one of us individually is responsible to God for how we respond to the gospel. Each of us individually is responsible to God. Each and every one of us is responsible to God uh, for living by faith. And that's shown through obedience to the word of God. Not obedience to our own opinion, which we count to be the word of God, but obedience to the word of God. Every person is individually responsible to God. So our duty as believers in this day and age is to read and to heed the Bible, to walk by faith, to love the Lord Jesus with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And my duty, my calling, and actually what I live to do as a Bible preacher and a Bible teacher, that is to clearly preach the Word of God in such a way that you are encouraged in your faith. And I want to preach the gospel in such a way with passion and with conviction so that you're encouraged to love God with all your heart. And that you're encouraged and desire to live a God-honoring life. But only you individually can decide if you're going to do those things. See, only you can choose to love Jesus. Only you can decide to live according to the Word of God. Only you can decide if you're going to uh, live a God-honoring life, and you do that every day, daily. Only you can decide if you're going to love Jesus and, and walk by faith. But I'm here to help. That's exactly what I want to do. Cross Trail Church is here to help. We want to encourage you in faith and life and in hope so that you can live for Jesus daily. That's my goal. That is my true, truly, folks, that is my heart's desire to preach the, and, and teach the Bible in a way that moves all of us to greater heights of love and faith in the Lord Jesus. And it's my goal to produce materials like these, to produce books and materials like these that uh, are blessed by the Holy Spirit of God that also move you to love and worship the Lord Jesus in spirit and in truth. That's the heart and soul in these books that I write. This is the foundation that we're trying to establish for Cross Trail Church. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Lord Jesus is our Savior. And so we exist to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And we're striving to worship Him from a place of genuine love and genuine faith. And we're going to strive to live according to His Word. And the motivation is love. We want to live according to His Word because we love Him. Jesus said this, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, or learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. That's why the church exists, folks. To be a place where people can come and lay their burdens at the Lord Jesus' feet. A place where people can learn from Jesus through the Holy Spirit. A place where people will find rest for their souls. It's not a place for sin and strife and contention. It's not a place where we sit and look at our neighbors and, and, and judge them according to our own standards so that we can either see ourselves as better or worse than them. When I resigned my last pastor at First Baptist Church from Newkirk, Oklahoma, my wife and I discussed where we would go and what we were going to do. And... Honestly, I had resigned myself that I was not going to do this anymore, that I was leaving the ministry forever. But my wife, Tina, uh, she got on to me. She said, listen, you have gifts from God, and you need to use these gifts for His glory. And so we talked. I mean, we didn't just have one conversation. We've been having this conversation now for months about what sort of church, what sort of ministry we desire to be a part of uh, what kind of ministry we wanted to facilitate in this world uh, according to the calling of God, according to the Holy Spirit. And, and as we sat there and talked and talked, we agreed on this one thing. That wherever we go, whatever church we pastor, the Lord Jesus ought to be the central focus, the main focus, everyone's focus in the church. So, in a jokingly sort of way, uh, we began to say, listen, if we start a church, we're going to call it the Forget You Church. And here's what we meant by that. 
we want to uh, be a part of a church and put together a church where, now listen, if you desire to learn more about Jesus, and if your desire is to study the Bible, and you have a true desire to worship the Lord Jesus, you want to be a part of that church, then you're welcome, and we want you to be a part of this fellowship. We want you to be a part of this ministry. But look, if you think church is about watching what your neighbor's doing on Sunday morning, and then going to the pastor and complaining about what so-and-so is doing, or what someone else is doing, if you think that you need to come to the church and set everyone straight, and you ought to be telling everyone what they should or shouldn't do, if you come into church with your mind on anything and everything other than Jesus Christ, well, forget you. There are plenty of other churches that you can go and pretend to be a Christian in. The focus of the church is Jesus Christ, not us. That's the point. The focus of the church is Jesus Christ. And so we wanted to get away from a church where people are sitting in the church service on Sunday morning, not focused on the Word of God, not more focused on God, moved by the Spirit, praising Jesus Christ, but are looking at their neighbors and each other and wondering and, and judging and causing strife and contention and gossip. And I like how Brennan Manning puts it. He wrote a book called Ragamuffin Gospel. I don't agree with everything that he says, but he does make some very good points. He said, something is radically wrong. Our huffing and puffing to impress God. Our scrambling for brownie points. Our thrashing about trying to fix ourselves while hiding our pettiness and wallowing in guilt. I like that part where he says we hide our pettiness. We hide about all those things about us that we don't even like. And we pretend that they're not really there. At Cross Trail Church, we want to get away from all that. We just want to worship Jesus. We just want to worship Jesus and love each other in Jesus, like we're called to do. But there's more that we're hoping to bring to this church. We're looking to bring about a new genuineness of faith. A new genuineness of faith. We're striving to lead people to be honest with God and honest with themselves. Most people play, act when they come to church. I, I call it putting on your game face. All week long, you're living out there like the devil, and then you come to church, you put on your game face, and act like you're some sort of spiritual warrior. Can we be honest? Can we say in all honesty that we're all flawed individuals? That we all have hang-ups? That we all can be petty? That we can all sin? That doesn't mean that God loves us any less, because in Christ Jesus, God loves us. So we're looking to be honest. Too many people are putting on their game face, glossing over their failures, their faults. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be honest with God if we're actually going to worship in spirit and in truth. And that doesn't mean that we sit around with our heads hung low, feeling guilty about all of our failings in life. To the contrary, the Bible clearly presents that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us those sins. And then he wipes the slate clean. The Bible says that godly sorrow leads to repentance, which then leads to life. Listen, whenever you repent and ask God to forgive you, the slate is wiped clean and you can live a life free of guilt. But more than this, it reminds us, being honest, reminds us that no one is perfect or free from sin. And what that means is that no matter what someone's done, Someone, even if, they're, if, they, if they did it before they were saved, if they did it after they were saved, it was something that was terrible, no matter what they've done, we can still love them unconditionally because they're no more guilty of sin than we are. It's been said that Christians are the only people in the world who shoot their wounded. Well, we're trying to get away from that. And so what we would like to foster at Cross Trail Church is an attitude that says, listen, if you've made a mistake... We understand and we choose to forgive you. If God can forgive you, so can we. And we want to restore you to the faith and restore you to the fold. If you're that one sheep that wanders away from the 99, we're going to go and search for you. We're going to go out looking for you until we find you and bring you home. Because nothing can separate us from the love of God, not even our own mistakes. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. We also would like to worship in a way 
that I can only describe as purely Oklahoma. Look, I was born and mostly raised in Oklahoma. I spent my childhood in Mississippi, but uh, moved back when I was in junior high and has lived here ever since, except for when Uncle Sam sent me to Colorado and when I went a few places to pastor churches. But look, I was born and mostly raised in Oklahoma. I'm an Okie, right? And being Oklahoman, I'm a redneck. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. We're trying to worship in a way. Now, this is why we call ourselves a Western community church. Not, not a cowboy church in the basic understanding of this term, right? But we are a church that appreciates our Western heritage and appreciates our culture. And so when we worship, we, we worship by singing those good old gospel songs. And we might throw in some new stuff and we might write some stuff. But we like to do this and we kind of have a gospel and country and bluegrass kind of country Western style to us. That's what we mean by celebrating our culture and our heritage. And we're kind of a come-as-you-are church because we want you to be comfortable right here. And listen, if blue jeans and boots and belt buckles and cowboy hats are your thing, you're going to feel right at home at Crossroad Church. Because if you can't see, you notice that that's exactly how I like to dress. We're not ashamed of our heritage. We're not ashamed of being country. Quite the opposite. We're proud of it. And we don't care if you don't... You don't like that. So we believe that if we live country, we ought to worship country. Right? If we, I mean, our, our identity is not swallowed up in Christ the minute we're saved. As a matter of fact, it comes out. So if we live country, then we worship country. That's what being a Western, uh, being a Western community church is about. Just being who we are when we worship. That's worshiping in spirit and in truth. And finally, I want to close by saying this. We believe in the grace of God. We believe in the grace of God. And what I mean by this is, listen, we understand there are no perfect people in this world. We understand that we're all saved by grace through Jesus Christ. And by emphasizing this, I want to, uh, uh, you know, I, I want people who felt left out at other churches Listen, if you've ever felt like, you know, maybe they said that you were welcome to come and participate, but they kind of had this attitude, as long as you sit in the back, as long as you go unnoticed, as long as you don't take part, you know, if you were ever made to feel like sort of a second-class Christian at church, and maybe people acted like what God saved you out of was so egregious that your sins were so bad that really you're never going to be a real part of the church, you're going to find things very different at Cross Trail Church. You are. Because we believe the Bible. We believe 1 John 1 9 that says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We believe there is nothing in your past, your present, your future, if you're in Jesus Christ, that can stop you from serving the Lord Jesus. And if you want to serve and have been left out in the cold in other places, you come right here. If your heart's desire is to have a living relationship with the Lord Jesus, and, and, and you want to experience love, and you want to be accepted, and you want to have that genuine fellowship with believers without judgment on a past that's, for, that's uh, forgiven and wiped clean by God, this church right here is the place for you. And listen, we believe in the grace of God. And we believe the grace of God and the forgiveness of God even applies after you've been saved. I know, that's an amazing concept, right? How many churches, if some church member makes a mistake, they excommunicate them? Suddenly, you know, it's like, well, if you do all those things before you become a Christian, then you come to Christ, they're all wiped clean. But if you actually slip into sin, lapse into sin, do something after you become a Christian, well, that is unpardonable. No, it's not. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And what I'm saying is, look, you've been faithful. You've been saved. You've been walking with Jesus but you made a mistake. 
you committed some sin and you're sitting there feeling like you no longer have a place in the church, that, that you've been disqualified from serving the Lord Jesus, this church is for you. Because here, we believe the Word of God. And God's Word says that God forgives. God's Word says that God redeems. God's Word says that God restores. And we want you to come. And we want you. We want you to serve. And we want you to use the gifts. And we want you to know that you're forgiven. And we want you to know that you can be redeemed and restored. We want you to know that there's a place in God's kingdom for you. Cross Trail Church is just what the name implies. The cross trail, that is the trail that leads to Jesus. That is the trail that leads to salvation. That is the trail that leads to eternal life. But it is also the trail that leads to living life for Jesus right now. Well, let me encourage you, if you've never called upon the name of the Lord, that you would take the time to do that. It all begins by asking the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to save you and to come and move into your heart and into your life. And if you'd like to be a part of Cross Church Church, if you'd like to learn more, I invite you to send me an email to the um, to Cross Trail Church at gmail.com. And uh, if you'd like to find out when we're going to have another worship service and you'd like to be a part, just send me an email and we'll send you the newsletter and I will begin to email and keep you updated when we're going to have another worship service and where. Until then, just stay tuned. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you for this message and thank you for the opportunity we've had to come together and worship. And I pray that people will take these things to heart and that we will take these things to heart. Give you all praise and glory this evening. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.